Have you ever been in a supermarket and seen all the different kinds of apples? There are Granny Smith, Red Delicious, Fuji, Honeycrisp, and countless other types. If someone asked you to fill a bag, you'd have to ask, which kind? But what about bananas? Have you ever marveled at the many kinds of bananas? I hope not because they're all the same kind. Over 97% of all bananas grown in the world are all part of the same subgroup, the Cavendish banana. It is the least biodiverse species on the planet, and it is close to extinction. Bananas are one of the most important crops in the agribusiness of Latin America. For many countries, it is the central piece of the primary sector of their economy. In fact, 80% of the world's banana production comes from Latin America. Bananas have a low carbon footprint, so they don't contribute much to the greenhouse effect. But the immense clearing of forests for banana plantations damages the environment. Furthermore, the heavy use of fertilizers, protective plastic bags, and dangerous pesticides harms human workers and pollutes the environment. Tens of thousands of workers are in U.S. courts after being sterilized by the use of a pesticide, DBCP, on banana plantations in the 1970s. Rivers, lakes, and ponds have become devoid of fish and plant life from toxic levels of phosphorus and sulfur. Unfortunately, that's just the start of the problem. Bananas have been selectively bred for thousands of years to get to what they are today. Wild bananas have many large seeds and are almost inedible. The bananas we eat today are the result of selective breeding for taste and smaller seeds. In fact, bananas today cannot reproduce sexually and almost all bananas grown are clones. They are all the exact same banana, the Cavendish. They all have identical genetic compositions, so any bug or disease that can affect one will ravage the world population. More and more resources are poured in for pesticides, which damage the environment. In history, we have seen something like this happen several times. The most famous of this kind of situation was the Irish potato famine. Potatoes were selectively bred within its own family, similar to the way bananas are now, and it paved the way for a disease that wiped out potato plants across Ireland. Back in the 1950s, the banana clone of that time, the gross Michael banana, was wiped out by disease and fungi, prompting the diffusion of the Cavendish. So maybe old people are right that bananas did taste better back then. Possibly, the region feeling the worst effects of this banana crisis is Latin America. The high concentration of banana plantations there amplifies the problems. In Costa Rica, the largest Latin American banana supplier, the government has declared a state of national emergency as two separate plagues of mealybugs and scale insects have already made over 20% of the crop inedible. Elsewhere, Panama disease, a soil-borne fungus that is resistant to fungicides, is spreading through Asian bananas. In 5 to 15 years, the Cavendish banana may be extinct. The economies of Latin America and other banana producing regions will suffer, people will be thrown into poverty, and entire areas could starve. It may happen that a few years later, another strain of bananas will rise up next to be cloned, and after several years of cultivation, will be ready for mass production. It may taste worse than the Cavendish, like the Cavendish tasted worse than the Gross Michael, but many people will rejoice. Life will continue, the environment will suffer, workers will get harmed, but it will be okay because we in our pampered civilization will have our bananas again, all the same. Is that good? Of course not! What if we can make bananas like apples? What if we can make dozens of different kinds? What if we could buy bananas knowing workers' rights were supported? What if we could make banana production in the world more stable and more environmentally friendly? Well, we can, and you can help make a difference. Try buying fair trade bananas. Fair Trade is an organization that supports small producers and holds them to regulations on the environment and workers' rights. More emphasis on small producers and less on profit will allow said producers to experiment more with different kinds of bananas, like red bananas and apple bananas. If big fruit companies see consumers switching to small producers, they will either adapt their policies to emulate the sustainable practices of smaller producers or go out of business. Share this video with your friends and buy Fair Trade bananas. The organic quality will taste better, and your money will ensure a better future for the producers, workers, environment, and fate of bananas around the world. Oh, yes. We have no bananas. We have
have no bananas today. 